you know, Danny, it's just getting a lot of calls from people that are looking to do the right thing with their newborns as far as financially. Um, I don't know if anybody realizes this, but raising a child from birth to age 18 is over $233,000. Uh, that's just a middle-income family, two kids. And that doesn't even include the college costs. I read a really good article today, and we know what's going on with demographics, right? We're having a baby dearth throughout the entire world. And I read an article today, this morning, couldn't sleep, been up since gosh knows when, um, that one of the reasons why young adults don't want children is because of climate change. They don't want to bring a child into it, another methane-producing uh, kind of thing into the world. So uh, that was like number the, one of the top three reasons besides cost uh, was climate change. So I thought that was uh, pretty interesting. So the conversation I had with a client the other day <clears throat> was – I really would like to start my my newborn on the right track. And I said, oh, gosh, I just started to remember what I did for Haley and probably what you do now, Danny, is one of the first things that I did was as soon as she got a Social Security number was set up a 529 plan, right? So a 529 plan allows you to save for college, and if the, and you can even use it before college up to a certain amount. Um uh, which would be, uh, I think, up to $10,000, Danny, if I'm not mistaken, which I don't know how that number came up. So if I, wanna, if I have high school expenses, I could spend about 10, 10 grand. But the 529, if used for the right things, would come out completely tax-free. Now, some people would know is, hey, I don't, I don't know how to plan for this. I don't know how to plan for 529 like a lot of people, like I did. I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of this. I overfunded it. I started it when my daughter was... Again, less than a month old. And I said, I'm going to put $600 a month in this thing for gosh knows how many years. And now she's got a full ride and I've got an overfunded 529. The most important thing, I think, Danny, is to start it. You know college costs are going to be there. You might need to subsidize them. Um, the most important thing is get in motion because what I notice is once you start this process, you think about other things you need to do because I'm amazed that step two is we don't see. Well, let's go step one about setting up the 529, Danny. What um, I started it early, and, and that's maybe I was a little too early, uh, but I thought it was right to just get it done. But what are your thoughts? Well, I'd, I'd rather be early than late. I don't think there's ever a time you can be too early. And, and look, you, you've been blessed. You've been in a really good situation. Haley did great. I mean, she has a full ride. Those are things that, you know, not everybody's going to see. In fact, most people probably won't. So being diligent, putting those funds aside on a consistent basis is really going to pay dividends, no pun intended, because it, it is something that you do need to start over time. And once you establish these habits, especially at a much younger age, it gets a lot easier the older you get. And look, I mean, we all know life happens. Things occur. Um, you're going to have some bumps in the road. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that while you can, albeit it may be a little bit more difficult, you're going to set yourself and your child way further ahead and prepare yourself better for retirement. I mean, yes. how many people do you know, Rich, who robbed their retirement yes. to pay for a child's education? And the conversation we have to have is an uncomfortable one. Like, look, your child can get a loan, but in retirement, you can. it's going to be much more difficult for you. Absolutely. You have a lot of parents that will go into more debt. They'll take on home equity lines of credit, whatever it is to support their children going through school. What the cool part about starting early is you won't need to start with much because what you hope is over time the account grows, right? right. Um, so it just the fact is, like you said, better early than late. Now, here are the repercussions. If you happen to overfund it, keep this in mind. You can use it for yourself. Remember, this account really can change beneficiaries. You can change to whom you want the money to go to. Uh, unlike a custodial account. Now, I talked to a client the other day. She's being, you know, by the custodian, she's saying, there's hell no, listen, you need to change these custodial accounts over 
to your children because they are the age of majority and she's been hesitant to do it because she thinks her kids will spend the money. And I'm like, well, this is the rep. This is the problem with custodial accounts. So if you're going to fund a custodial account, and I know people do, you want to keep a small amount of money in there. Maybe you use that as a, le a lesson, you know, money lessons for your kids because in, at the age of majority, they can do that. I'll never forget. I had a client that um, their daughter went into a brokerage office where they had the custodial account, even though I told them not to do it, and they really funded this thing. <clears throat> she took $100,000 out to buy a car for a boyfriend. Oh, my goodness. And he was livid, but I'm like, you can't do a darn thing about it. You, you can't. And custodians today, whether it's Fidelity or Ameritrade, whatever it is, they are going to get on you as custodian to change it over to the former child's ownership. Um, they're, they're, you know, they're being pushed to do so. So keep that in mind. The 529, there's a little string attached. If my daughter decided that she didn't want to go to college, I didn't have to relinquish those funds. I could use them. There was immediate family I can give it to. Or even, you know, she's got until age 30 to take the money out. By then, what I told her is maybe you have kids of your own. Uh, if you're not worried about the climate change thing. And you'll have kids of your own. And guess what? I can switch that to a grandchild. So um, not to overfund it because you got to do some planning and figure out maybe two, three years down the road when the dust settles. But at least start it on the 529. Yep. The second thing that I noticed people really have a hard time with is I set my guardian for Haley – we both did as parents very quickly. If something were to happen to both of us, where would my daughter go? And got those documents done. I notice more parents who do not do this. And that troubles me. I mean, it, the odds are it's not going to happen. But what if it does? Do you want a court system to select a guardian? Or do you and your spouse want to make that decision and communicate with that party. What are your thoughts on that? But I see that a lot where it's years and years and years and there's, it's still not done. First, I'm, I'm going to backtrack to what your first original thought was. What? I wonder what liberal arts school they, they surveyed to get that people don't want to have children because of a carbon. <laughs> get out of here. I've never heard of that. Okay? I'll send you the um, article. I read it this morning. Yeah. But then I, I, I wanted to go who, back to bed what? and not come in. Yeah, no. what six people they surveyed for this one. Um, but no, I, I think that's a very valid point. Look, you and I are on the front lines. We see this more frequently than most. And so we are exposed to it. And obviously it's it's something that we've, we've seen, unfortunately, happen. And so making sure you have these documents set up, but not only set up, but make sure you have things established. So yep. you know, many times people go and do the estate plan. Look, nobody wants to talk about these things. Um, yes. they're, right. they're uncomfortable. Nobody likes debt. Nobody likes taxes. Nobody likes any of this stuff. However, it's a fact of life. And you need to come to realization that if you don't have these things set up, where do your children go? What is the process? And I can tell you right now, it's not a fun one. So you want to make sure that you start thinking about these things. And look, if, if this doesn't pertain to you and you have kids, you have loved ones, I would share this information with every one of them that, hey, you don't have this, this stuff set up. Go get it done. Go get it done and go do it now because this is that important. It um, is. It is that important. You know, yeah. So many times we talk, we have people come to us and, you know, we talk about the big picture and many times they don't have any of these estate planning things done. And for somebody with children, this is probably, uh, this is close to being number one, if not the number one topic or thing that needs to be addressed and done. So, you know, stat. So, you know, my, my feelings are very strong that, you know, these are things that you need to accomplish and you need to make sure that they're set in place and they need to be communicated. You don't want to die and have something bad happen. And then all of a sudden, you know, your your brother or sister or your, your best friend finds out all of a sudden that they're taking your kids. <laughs> well, what I will tell you is, and you're right, um, people just don't think it's going to happen to them. And the interesting part of this is the discussion with your spouse on who are the parties 
also is very interesting. There's some interesting dynamic. You want your sister. Well, then you start to feel you start to get the feel for how everybody feels about leaving their kids to certain people. And that's also and I think that's why maybe people avoid it, Danny, is it's a tough decision and then you know that maybe you and your spouse are going to disagree about who is going to be and then you need to have the discussion I had recently not too well not too long ago you know fam, a young family decide that yeah we have to do this they agree on the guardian like they don't fight about it and they call me and say rich we didn't fight about it you know we both said that, you know it was unanimous I'm like okay she goes well, we're off to change the guardian uh what are we missing here did you speak to that individual that you want to leave your three children to? Oh, yo, don't, that's my mom. She absolutely loves them and will take them. Uh, well, mom loves those kids, but she said, yeah, I think so. But she, she didn't really have the enthusiastic response. Make sure to have the conversation with the guardian who needs to ponder this very, very important decision. It's not just yours, it's theirs. More of these tips when we return here on Financial Fitness Friday of The Real Investment Show. Stay tuned. Lance is trolling us on YouTube and he says, yeah, KFC is running out of chicken. Global warming, Lance. Global. Those chickens are frying right in the yard and they can't get it to the table fast enough. Right? So... You just, if you ever have a farm, if I ever have a farm, I'm just going to say free range sizzlers because these birds are on fire. And then JP goes, could name Bill Gates as guardian to address the carbon footprint. Yeah, that's who I want my kid with. Bill Gates. I can think of another few other people I would rather, well, no, I can't. But that would be, that would be scary. Doesn't he actually take the blood of children to stay alive or something? I read about that somewhere. Um, that's only a rumor. It's just, you know, more likely than not national inquirer or something like he's a vampire or something like that. Right. Yeah. Um, so we're talking about this with children and the responsibility that you have, and you have to face your mortality more than ever when you have children and at least until they're out on their own. And the other thing that we find, you know, besides maybe looking to, fi- to at least start the 529, another thing is, Danny, other family members can gift into the 529. They're very generous as far as how much money they can hold. What a nice gift for grandparents to add money to as opposed to some plastic cheap toy from Walmart. <clears throat> yep. You know, we you, you, you know, have grandkids that uh, – grandparents uh, who fund – or help to fund 529. So that's a nice little thing for them to do. Um, we talked about the guardians and the dynamics that you need to keep in mind. Uh, not only conversations bet- between you and a spouse, but the hopefully never need to, the guardian. Yep. That sounds like a good movie. So, Kevin Costner in The Guardian. Um, so Rich, two, two things with that, though. So, so going back to the, the the gifting of 529 plans, you know, one thing that we have started to utilize um, when we actually moved our 529s to Fidelity uh-huh. is that they actually have a gifting page. So you can actually send that out to loved ones and say, hey, I know you want to give nice. so-and-so a, a gift. They have plenty of toys. Um, we would love for you to do, awesome. um, you know, help, help uh, donate to their college fund. Um, and so they've made it a lot easier. Most 529 providers are actually doing that where they, nobody has complete access to the actual 529, but you have a page, a link that you can send to them and you can, uh, kind of a GoFundMe. You can have somebody contribute to it. So it's pretty neat. That, that is neat. So what happens? You get the link saying grandpa Jones I used to like grandpa Jones on hee grandpa Jones. Um, please fund juniors. Remember junior on hee Forget it, Danny. Brent knows what I'm talking about. Um, Probably Lance, too, Um, as he's eating his KFC chicken for breakfast. Uh, You know, it's a link that says, hey, Fun Juniors 529 instead of this cheap toy from Walmart or whatever. Uh, Could you put a little message in there on your own along with the link? 
Um, how does that? And then once once they click the link, it's just like a page for it to come up, like a secure link for you to put in how much you want to uh, place into the five twenty nine. And then how do they send the money? Like, how, well, how, do you know how the mechanics of that works? Because I do like that idea. Yeah. So I mean, there's a handful of ways, but the uh -huh. the easiest way is people can put in their credit card number, their uh, their routing number. I mean, you just set up oh. like a an EFT. It's pretty neat. Oh, sweet. Very cool. Well, that is a good to your point. That really does. That what a great Christmas gift that'll have been from all the junk that we got for Haley that was just tossed away eventually. Um, yep. The th and so again, the guardians and the conversations, and then I have people that don't you have clients that they never get to it because they're they're perplexed. They they like right. it's like the lesser of whatever evil guardian we're gonna have because everybody's got drama or whatever it is, and let's let's just hope we just don't travel to. I have one couple. That says the way we, 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 we don't like our family at all. We don't want them raising our kids. We take separate flights everywhere we go. <laughs> they take separate flights so that the odds are they don't pass away together. They do all these things. I said, what do you all take separate cars? I mean, you got to go separate with a lot of stuff. But that's an extreme example. Now, also, I notice people don't look to adjust their life insurance right away once you have those children you better reassess how much life insurance you need don't you danny absolutely i think that's one of the big things that people fail to do because they think that okay i have all this other stuff set up we've had the conversation but not only that who does that life insurance go to mm -hmm. should both you and your spouse pass i mean this good is very question. important good question does it go to the kids does it go to an individual does it go to a trust that somebody you have a trustee who is not the guardian who can oversee and make sure that the kids get what they need. And I think that's a very important aspect that many people uh, fail to plan for is to think that far ahead and then you know go as far as implementing it is even further because let's face it, many people don't even want to spend the money for the estate plan. Yes, I agree. I think that, um, again, I'm not saying it's easy, but you're facing your own mortality. You want to make sure that you cover your child through at least maybe college, right? The right insurance, whether it's term or a permanent policy, it just depends. If you're young parents, term is probably going to be the biggest bang for your buck, right? And I can make those payments. And people will say, well, you know, I've got term through work. And I'm like, well, that's great. But what happens if you leave work? You can't take it with you. So you should, and this is what I did, I had insurance through my company, but since I didn't have a lot of faith that I was going to be with the company, um, I went and I got my separate policy, right, <clears throat> to supplement what I needed in insurance. So you have to go ahead and do some planning to figure out how much insurance. Also, is there a life change where you're going to have one spouse stay home? with your newborn as opposed to going back to work you might need insurance for the spouse to take care of the child so you know again the life dynamics from a financial perspective can be intimidating but it can and yeah yeah you make a really good point though rich i mean i think that how many times do people fail to insure the stay-at-home spouse i mean that's a big deal because that that costs a lot of money. I mean, if you put a price tag on a stay at home mom or dad, it is much more expensive than many people think. So you do need to cover that person at home. Do I notice many times? And again, not to not to be sexist at all, but when female stays home and I have to tell a male or a spouse, say, hey, listen, you know, or just stay at home spouse in general. Uh, well, you know, what that stay at home spouse is indispensable. If God forbid something happens to that stay at home spouse, what would happen to your career and what you're doing? You're going to need to supplement that. I had one individual who said, You know what, Rich? You're right. If something happens to my wife, he, he spun it around. If something happens to my wife, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really increase the life insurance on her 
So more than I need. So guess what? I can have a career change. I can stay home with my child. And I don't have to worry about it. That I thought that was a pretty unique way of looking at it. Where he's he so like I don't want anybody raising my child. I want it to yep. be me. And maybe I work from home, but I'll have to supplement my income. I think once new parents get into the groove of this and understand what it means to the security of their precious one, I think they embrace it. But you need to kickstart it. I kick. I kickstarted it through the 529. I find that that's the easiest way to do it. What other things can you think about, Danny, that we don't uh, we don't consider um, overall? I don't think we consider health. I mean, not healthcare costs, but costs. As far as oh, we just had a baby, we need a bigger house, right? Now we need, you know, the, even though the house is fine, you know, it's a newborn. Baby's got a, his or her own room, but we need more room. Well, why? I just had this conversation not too long ago. You're in a good school district. Yeah, the house is a little smaller than you'd like, but why do you need more house? Because no, you're not I, a I child, think the thing that's, right? a, that's a great point. I, I can remember back with, with my wife, we were looking at baby furniture, just going back and thinking, <clears throat> finally, we stopped one day and I just said, Michelle, who's this furniture for? Is it for the kid or is it for us? And she's like, well, it's for the kid. I was like, okay, do you remember what your, what your baby furniture looked like? She's like, well, no. And I was like, okay, let's take a step back. So we need something that's safe. We don't need something that's fancy or looks, you know, some, some all decked out room, which those things are nice, right? I mean, I, I think we can all appreciate those things. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you need to, to take a step back even with that, with the additional cost of having a child. I mean, because we can get tied up into these things very easily where we think we need the best, the nicest. Um, same thing goes for the houses. And, you know, you talk about the exponential cost with home ownership. Um, how many times do you see somebody jump into a starter home before they have children, a very nice home, three, four bedroom, and then they have another child and they think they need to jump immediately into something much bigger. And they never reaped any benefit because they didn't, they didn't have any equity in that first house. Right. I mean, we, we can talk about a lot of, you know, just the home ownership costs, but not only, you know, everybody says home ownership is so much better than renting. Well, not if, not if you're in it for a year or two and you don't put a big down payment or you don't see the exponential inflation like we've seen, there's going to be some, some pressure there. Absolutely. Absolutely. We get back, we're going to continue the conversation here on Financial Fitness Friday. Stay tuned for our last segment, Went Fast. Why does Danny always bring up terrible memories for me? He's like a trigger for terrible childhood memories. I know, I remember exactly what my furniture was growing up. It was this white enamel stuff with three-dimensional lambs on it. Baby lambs with big eyes and stuff like that. I had that set till I was like 10. That's why yeah, so wait a second, though, but that wasn't your crib, was it? No, I wasn't. But I'm saying this, but you said okay. bedroom furniture, right? I mean, I remember yeah. when I was a little kid that, you know, and then I'm 9, 10 years old and I have friends coming over and looking at this furniture. Like with little baby lambs and stuff on it. I mean, yep. you know, you know, there's a lot of trauma in my childhood. I'm going to tell you that. Um, and thanks for bringing it up. Well, um, you know, you know, it's funny. You talk about things in kids and everybody thinks, oh, well, each kid needs their own room. And, um, you know, like we've we've moved in the past and the kids, the kids complained about sleeping together. And now they have their own rooms, but they all still sleep together. Like, or they sleep with the parents. Oh, that's not happening. Well, especially with your bum leg, that's going to happen. Yeah, no, for sure. Someone kicks that thing, and you're uh, you're going to be on the roof um, overall. Hey, so again, Sept uh, September, it's almost September, August 19th, we are going to have this small business forum. Really, and I was thinking about this, Danny. I think you're going to moderate it with Tom Allen, our retirement plan specialist. But uh, what I'm learning or thinking about is, you know, if you just even have – if you just want to learn the benefits of a retirement plan, say you want to contribute to your plan at work, um, you know, I maybe you're going to be an advocate. You're in a small business, and you are going to, and they don't, haven't started a retirement plan. Maybe you're going to be the one who brings this up to your boss. I have people that have done that. 
and rally to get a plan. But maybe you need to take the responsibility of learning this stuff so you can bring it to the boss or the owner and say, hey, we need this. Talk to these guys. So that'll be on the 19th. I think it's at noon, right? It is. Lunch yep. and learn. Uh, I'm going to sit in on that too, but Danny will moderate it. But so you don't have to be the business owner. Maybe you work for a business and you really want a plan, but you don't know how to ask what to do, types of plans. This is going to help you be knowledgeable because this is just the first one of, of where we're going to give you some really good general information. Then second lunch and learn with Tom more direct, more granular as far as plans that are available. So I was just thinking that, you know, you don't need to be the owner of this small business. Maybe you want to help that owner retain talent like you. So make sure to tune in to that. That's a great, that's a great point, Rich. You know, I know it's targeted more for small business owners because we get a lot of questions about this. And Tom is really, really good at setting these plans up making sure the small business owners keep as much money in their pocket, find tax savings, but also retain key talent. And so we do a lot of times have employees come to us and say, hey, um, I, I can't tell you how many plans we've set up where it's from an employee going to their boss and saying, hey, we really need to do something here. And then you find they find out the benefits not only for the employees, but for the owners. It is huge. And so and then you look at tax savings over long periods of time. It, it's pretty nice to see. And so if that may be you, tune in because there's going to be a lot of really good information here. And then if, if it's just somebody who's looking to gain more knowledge, I think that we're going to cover a lot of really good stuff, yeah. uh, basic information that everybody can can really understand easily, and you're going to be able to put it to use pretty quick. I think so. And how my mom and dad didn't want a girl. That's why I didn't have lambs on my furniture. I had blue lambs. All right. The girls had the pink lambs. I had the blue ones. That didn't help any, by the way, because they were powder blue. Danny's going to have me relive this moment for the rest of the day on how angry I was. All right. Speaking, of, an speaking of angry, we talk about ESG. We talk about that looks at, okay, I'm going to have, I'm going to be this best company. You know, the carbon footprint of me making this widget is this. And that, you know, environmental, sustainable governance, right? Or and social, yeah. What did we talk about? When, all right, social, what did we talk about? We talked about how it's going to raise costs. What investors don't realize, and this is from Larry Swedro, who's a big-time investor, that the actual lower-than-expected return you're going to get on those investments that are ESG <clears throat> compliant. This is new research that companies with low ESGs, right? Uh, that's environmental, social, and governance ratings have a relatively small investor base because of investor preferences. And there's a lot of issues that go along um, with this smaller base, higher cost of capital. In other words, some of these companies are very aggressive and the cost of capital is higher, lower returns to investors. Higher valuations, right, overall. And what happens is this is not really, and I think what Larry Swedro was talking about in this is not really talking about some of these mainstream companies but some of the companies that are coming up overall. But I think every company that falls into these higher ESG ratings eventually, they're going to have lower risk. They're going to be less prone to market shocks. They're just going to be much big, more bloated because you're going to need the bureaucracy, Danny. You're going to need, like I wrote this on Facebook with the pandemic, that you are going to have a whole department in your company that is just ESG compliance. That's a drag on productivity. Now, again, they say investors want this. I'm having a tough time with that. <clears throat> what investors usually want is a return on their money. <clears throat> but now 
I mean, you're telling me these guys trading meme stocks are all into ESG? What kind of ESG do I have with AMC stock? Right? I mean, I don't understand this. Investors are so wanting this so badly because of the higher costs that are going to occur. What, do you, what are your thoughts? <clears throat> if you look at fund flows, I mean, I think it does show that there's obviously a, I mean, there's, there's a want for it to some extent. Now, it may be um, Wall Street has created something that they feel like everybody needs, and we have this new great product that everybody should be in. That's part of it, right? But if you look at the returns, if you look at the overall, how do you differentiate between different ESG funds, they may look at things a lot differently than what you think. And there's probably a lot of companies in there that you may not agree with or think that are the, um, the ESG type that are actually in those funds. So it may not be as different as you suspect. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and like any regulatory aspect, you know, we see this ebb and flow with, with government and, and red tape. I mean, we see uh, cost increase and decrease and businesses do well. And, yeah. and then, you know, they have to make changes. It's going to be the same thing with this ESG. Uh, you know, it, it's not a problem by any means. It's, I think it's something that all companies should strive towards. You know, we all want to do, do the right thing. But what is that? And is there a set benchmark for that? I don't think there is. Right. And if you have one benchmark that spreads every through every company, that could be a problem. And um, ESG became has become a big buzzword, uh, big buzz terms. Right. Hey, I'm in, you know, I'm compliant. It's just like socially responsible funds years ago. Remember, they're still out there. But then you would look at some of the companies in there and go, uh, how is Rick's socially responsible? I mean, what are the, like, are they cleaning the polls with? an eco-friendly wax. Um, LED lights. Yeah, I don't understand. <clears throat> you know, see, so maybe there is a need for, maybe there is a, yeah, there, I would uh, agree. There is a subset of investors and future investors that are going to want companies to follow these ESG guidelines. What's out there now that adheres to these guidelines is, is suspect. Even though they get a lot of fun flows in and all this stuff because it's the buzzword. And we know one thing about Wall Street. They are so, so good at taking that buzzword from that little B and turning it, turning it into like Ghidra, right, with three heads, right? They are good at taking that little concept, blowing it up, and then sucking everybody's money in. I mean, they are the best at uh, – Wall Street is the best – at doing that. So if you're ESG compliant and you're looking at funds and investments, you have to look at one, what are the costs to you to own this? Um, and I don't, you know, people may not look at the cost. Look at the companies inside the invest, you know, inside there. I, I mean, I've had people dig into sometimes these companies and try to figure out how is this company ESG compliant? Right? And for now, it's a big marketing gimmick. Everybody's trying yes. to figure it out. I'm not saying it doesn't have traction and it's not going to be important in the future because it is. Um, I'm saying is now you're part of a big – you're a guinea pig in a big experiment, right? That's what your money is. It's a big that's right. I think that's marketing a experiment right now. Yeah, that's a really good point, though. What are the costs? Because a lot of times the cost of doing something like this may be more because they're also having to do different types of analysis. So right. the more in-depth analysis and things of that nature, you could see this be more expensive than your general large cap fund or mid cap or whatever area that they're going into. But to your point, Rich, talking about the portfolio, I just pulled up and Googled the first just ESG, uh, excuse me, ESG funds and looked at the portfolio of one of them, yeah. uh, a very large one. Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, Home Depot, Pepsi, there Morgan Stanley, Intel, And you can just own the S&P. This is, what, Dan, this is yeah. what Lance wrote. Hey, listen, also avoid funds with MSG. We're going to – had to throw that in for Brent. We will see you next week here on The Real Investment Show. Lance, back on Monday. You all have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks for tuning in, especially you YouTube trolleys. We love you. Bye.